How the, why am I not going live here? Oh, well, hey, everyone, Oops. and oh, welcome. Say, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's oh, great. I think it might be working on all platforms here. Oh, well, hey, everyone, Oops. and Wait, welcome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this this is great. I think it might be working on all oh, platforms Oh, my God. How do I quiet oh, myself? Everyone, and and this is, yeah. Oh, my God. Amy, this Amy, Amy it's working on Instagram, working but it's, on I'm getting on feedback. On my my I can hear it, too. Hold on, I gotta fix this. Oh my god, Amy, it's Amy, Amy it's working on it. Somebody it's help me, somebody help me. I can hear it too. It is working, but I don't know how to make it now. Oh my god, Amy, it's Amy, it's working on it. Somebody help me, somebody help me. All right, this, the, the audience isn't gonna like this. It is working, but I don't know how to make it now. Live video. Does anybody know how to make it just work the way it's supposed to? All right. I wish I, I did. I'm going to end it. I'm sorry. So I kind of know what I'm doing, Amy. I was What I was trying to do, Amy, is I mentioned the new technology where we could also be on Instagram. It was working, but it wouldn't shut up. So we're just going to do it the regular way and we'll figure it out. And let's welcome everyone to Chef AJ Live. Apologize for the glitch at the beginning. I'm your host, Chef AJ. This is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I want to thank Linda Middlesworth for my really cute shirt. Look, I'm already sweating from that nervous glitch. I have a guest today that you have been begging me to come back. She's just adorable. She's fantastic. Her work, she understands calorie density, weight loss as good as any of the doctors. She's she walks the talk. She has amazing recipes. Actually, her new book now, my friend Sharon McRae bought, said it is the best Indian cookbook she has. Her name is Amy. She's known as Broccoli Mom. She's a real person making it work in the real world. She's going to show some of the great recipes from her brand new ebook, Oil Free, of course. Please welcome her to the show. Hi, Amy. Sorry about that. And thank you for your patience with that. It did work, but you saw that there was feedback, so I couldn't do it. So we'll figure That's it out. At least you tried. And thanks so much for having me on again. It's so lovely to be back. Well, thank you. So you have a new book and I hear it's great. And it's it's a lot of recipes in that book too. Oh boy, yeah, I mean, it took a year to put together. And um, because I grew up in India, I wanted to make sure that I had some really good authentic Indian stuff. I did it with my sister-in-law who's from India and together we created some authentic, but also we've had to give some of them a, quite a bit of a twist to kind of get rid of the oil and the ghee and all that kind of stuff. But there's like, there's like 90 recipes in there, which are so jam packed full of flavor. And we've tried to also really emphasize vegetables, the importance of vegetables and how you can make vegetables taste incredible. Because as you know, vegetables are often the key to weight loss, low calorie density goodness. Um, so yes, if you want to fall in love with veggies, Indian style, then I highly recommend checking it out. But yeah, I mean, we fit, I can't stop eating these recipes. You know, like when you build up habits. So for the last year, I've been eating Indian recipes. And even though I don't need to anymore because I'm not doing any tasting or testing, we just every every few days, we're just going back to those Indian recipes and I can't get them off my mind. So I know they're good. <laughs> You make it, I, I love you. I don't watch a lot of stuff, but I do watch your stuff and you make everything look so easy and delicious. And I think that's part of the reason for your weight loss success. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, obviously you can lose weight eating, you know, pretty, you know, not, I don't want to call it boring food, but you know, potatoes and broccoli and just plain oatmeal and stuff. And that's probably fantastic, but I'm such a foodie. If I did that, I'd be so bored. So my brain comes up with these things. I need food to be ex really exciting for me. And that's the way that I've made weight loss work for myself is by creating low calorie density, but super exciting and delicious food. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for as well, because they don't want to be bored on their weight loss journey. If they're a foodie, they want to have, eat delicious stuff, ice cream, cream, cakes, Indian every single day. So that's why I kind of I really push to create these recipes to give people um, loads of variety on their weight loss journey. I love that because people vary. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Doug Lyle and that test he gives about the perfect personality and people vary in how much variety they need. See, like I'm boring. I can eat the same thing every day for lunch and I have. But for people that like variety, that are more novelty seeking, your recipes are great. And what I really love is you're not afraid to eat large quantities. So many women feel that the only way to lose weight is to weigh and measure their food on a plate and eat thimble sized portions. You eat huge amounts of food. Oh, man. I mean, if somebody told me, I had to eat small portions. I'd, I'd rather die. I mean, I'm a volume eater. I need humongous portions of soup. Like before I have a meal, I'll have a gigantic bowl of soup just to fill me up as like a preload before I go on to my main meal. Um, and you know, I'm actually currently working on my fitness journey and I've been working with, um, with some people to like build some muscle and they're like, okay, Amy, you've got to track your food. We need to know how much you're eating. I can't even track it for one day. I can't make it past breakfast. And I'm like, I, I have to quit the tracking. I, I, 
I can't do it. I just need to put food in my mouth and a lot of it. Um, so yeah, the weighing and measuring, counting calories and the tracking, that's not for me, but you can lose weight, obviously, without doing any of that stuff and eating huge portions. And that's the thing I love about this lifestyle so much. Me too. And I love that you're very real. You're not, you know, you don't, you don't always sit there with full makeup and hair. Like you just show your life like as it really is. And I, I watched a recent one of your um, Instagrams and you talked about how maybe you thought you might have gained a little bit of weight. Yeah. I wanted to talk to that, um, talk to you about that as well. Cause I think a lot of people might experience that, you know, along their weight loss journey, you know, it's never going to be stagnant. You're going to have ups and downs throughout your whole life, throughout, you know, every week, every month, every year, there's going to be ups and downs in terms of your weight. But I think especially coming out of that holiday Christmas season, when people have indulged a little bit, whether they've gone kind of, you know, not vegan or eating, you know, more oily processed foods, or even like me within eating whole plant foods, it's still easy to gain weight. And, you know, I was just adding a bit more dates, a little bit more nuts and seeds, not really thinking about my hunger fullness cues. And, you know, it's the first time I kind of just wanted to test out and see almost what I can get away with because I, I, you know, having lost 60 pounds, I was like, okay, so, so what now do I have to keep in, eating this way or can I incorporate more stuff? And I've learned that, you know, the more you incorporate and kind of go back to your old ways, the weight comes back up with you. So those habits that you build in order to lose weight, you've got to keep those habits. Otherwise the weight's going to come back. So that's a lesson that I've recently learned from myself. And, and that's great. And I'm sure if you want to take it off, you probably will because everything you say is rooted in calorie, the science of calorie density. It's not yeah. you know, childhood trauma. It's really, it's calorie density. And, you know, I dabbled too, you know, it's been, I, I lost my weight in 2012 and I waited 10 years to test the waters. Oh, wow. How did it and, go for you? Well, here's the thing. So I think everybody's a little bit different. I found that I could incorporate a little bit of more of the higher caloric density foods. I could do a little bit of dried fruit. I wasn't eating dates obsessively. So I could do that. I could do, you know, things like corn tortillas, even a few things made out of like whole grain flours, like meaning like oats, if you ground them. But the minute I put in nuts and seeds, tahini, I mean, my weight shot up five pounds immediately. And people go, oh, well, you you look too skinny anyway. It was better. They don't understand my situation orthopedically with my knee that's hanging on by a thread. Five pounds to my knee is like, you know, they say it's 50 pounds to, to, to like five. And anyway, the point I'm trying to yeah. make it for me, it's more the high fat foods that, that are the problem than a little bit of the, the, the higher caloric dense foods that don't have the fat. But but I always feel like, like you say, if you could have eaten those foods and lose weight, then do it. But but I yeah. could, yeah. No, and I, and for me, I think what it comes down to is just overstimulating my taste buds. That, that's what it is. So the more dates and the more, yeah, nuts and seeds and the more, you know, I was starting to have some maple syrup in there. It just heightened and it overstimulated my taste buds. So it's not the fact necessarily that those added more calories, although of course that comes into play. It's more the fact that the volume of food I was then eating was just so much bigger than before because it was just so darn delicious. And also obviously, you know, I kind of got a bit complacent and I wasn't including as many veggies as I was before. So really, it's also reminded me how important, how vital veggies are for weight loss. You know, when people are eating the 50-50 plate, like that's fantastic. But I need to preload on veggies and then eat the 50-50 plate as well. And also, I, I think I saw a video of yours where you were chatting about the 50-50 plate and you preload on huh? how it doesn't make sense all the time in the sense that you could, you, you know, you can have a visual 50, 50 plate, but if you've piled the, the rice high and you've just got a few bits of iceberg lettuce, that's not a 50, 50 plate. So you really have to prioritize those veggies. Um, so yeah, so that's what it's reminded me of as well. Yeah. You know, I, I, I guess that maybe some people don't like eating large volumes of food and that's fine. But for me, you know, even if I can never have nuts again, and I could if I wanted to, but I, I don't, I mean, I've learned to love things more than nuts like rice and, and potatoes. I, I, I think of it like kind of like when you think about money I, or, or like, I want to make the most amount of money for the least amount of effort in life. And I want to yeah. eat the most amount of food for the least amount of calories. So for me, I love volume. Like I love having big volumes rather than having little tiny portion of like a little date nut dessert. Like to me, sure. that doesn't cut it for me. Like if, but, but I guess some people like that, you know, and, and everyone's different. And also I, you know, I thought, I think it's also important to mention I, you know, for me personally, I'm not losing weight because I feel like I don't look great. I, I feel great right now. And, you know, I think everyone needs to get to a place where they feel comfortable. Um, you know, the food that they're eating has to kind of um, go in line with how they're feeling. Um, but, you know, for me personally, because I'm really working on my fitness journey and I also 
it's nicer to do exercise and to move your body when you're that little bit leaner for me anyway. So it's kind of like it comes, it's like the fitness part of it, which is the most important for me. Um, but, you know, anyone can kind of stop on their journey wherever they want to, wherever they feel most comfortable and what, you know, whatever is worth it in terms of their diet. So I think that's really nice. And you can do that all on a whole food plant based diet, wherever you feel comfortable. That's where you can stop and then you can just go from there. Absolutely. Oh, people are saying they're so happy you came on again. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. When did you decide to 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 document your journey? Um, well, actually, I started the reason why I started Instagram was to document my journey and just to give my sense myself that sense of accountability, because I didn't have anyone in my life that was eating the way I was. It was also the middle of um, COVID as well. So like, I, I didn't have anything going on. I was like, right, I'm going to do this because I've known about the starch solution for years and years and years and I dabbled with one toe in and I never did it properly um so yeah so I decided right I'm going to do it and I also want to document it to, sh to share the food that I'm eating and that'll kind of make me you know put more veggies on my plate put more color on make it like a rainbow um and really do it properly and so yes yeah, so I've been documenting my journey since if you scroll back on Instagram since 2020 um and then I thought it'd be fun to dabble in YouTube as well and I'm really enjoying making fun YouTube videos as well just in terms of the creative side in terms of recipes but yeah it's been a, it's been a long time now I love how you always lick whatever you're eating like is I, I, I some, some people get offended when I do that you know but oh, well but it, you're not serving food in a restaurant you know I, I teach I dessert master classes and I have two students that were age seven and eight and they're actually going to be on my show my last show of the year tomorrow and I love okay. watching them through zoom their childlike just just innocence in the way they would just make something and then just lick it. I mean, I think that's adorable. Yeah, it's so funny how people are so critical. Like I remember when I used to, uh, when I started out on YouTube, I lived in a very small apartment in Sherman Oaks. Like, Your counter is disgusting, meaning like they didn't like the way it looked. I mean, it's yeah. an apartment building. I, I can't, I can't. Re I what can't can you do it. about it? <laughs> you know, I mean, people are just, or like, uh, I, I picked up my dog and I didn't wash my hands. I'm like, you're not eating it. What do you care? If, I mean, if that's what everyone does in their own home, but as soon as somebody does it on a screen, then, you know, people get offended about it. I mean, I, I'm a messy person. I mean, I try to do my kitchen, especially for, for you, Chef AJ, but it's still a mess. There's nothing I can do about it. I personally think that one of the reasons uh, people love you and watch you is because you're not just very likable, but you're genuine and you're so you're relatable, you know? Well, I, I try to be because I, I really want to show people that you don't have to be picture perfect in order to eat this way you know living on a beach you know with the perfect body and all that kind of stuff you can have a messy house and a messy life and still prioritize eating the right food for your health and to get lean if you want to nice you know do, do, do you feel like when you transitioned from a higher calorie density because Dr. Lyle always talks about that if somebody's overweight 80 percent of that the reason is it's genetic and the rest is obviously lifestyle diet and exercise but that when people are overweight, it's because the average caloric density of their diet is too high. So when you switched from eating a higher fat diet to a lower fat diet, did, were yeah. there any longings? Were there any cravings? Because I find a lot of people at the first, even if you're giving them enough food and volume, they have that kind of that missing for that fat. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, it was really, really tough. And the thing that I, I mean, I was so lucky, I guess, because I decided to do it mid COVID. So before COVID, my husband and I would go out to eat. There was this vegan American diner place in, in where we where we live. And we would go there like three, four, five times every single week and eat burgers and milkshake and fry that, like all the things. Everything was closed. So it was perfect. I didn't have access to any of my usual highs. And so uh, sometimes I guess picking your moments is fantastic. But obviously it was also tough because my husband was eating his own thing. It was vegan, but he still had the chocolates and the Ben and Jerry ice cream. So in terms of having a clean environment, obviously you talk about that all the time. That is so important. So I had to ask him to get rid of that stuff so I could really focus and and like and do this properly. And sometimes having those hard conversations with people in your life is what makes the difference to being like, you know, to like committing fully is what I mean. So um, but yeah, it was tough. It was definitely tough. But, you know, I also had fun with that and found ways of getting creative and like making the cookies that I love and making different dishes. You know, some of the amazing Indian things that I'm making today, you know, making those, but making them healthy. And so you can also switch your mindset and see it as a fun challenge and not just like, oh, poor me, I can't eat any of those things because you can make anything healthy, anything vegan oil free. Absolutely. Well, you you I think you've really mastered it, you know. So what, what are you going to make for us today? And okay. I'm gonna, I, I, have I, the link I just to realized. That. We haven't even got started on the recipes and I've been ambitious. I'm going to try and make three things for you uh, for you guys today. Okay, so today I'm going to make 
um, three things from my new Indian um, vegan oil-free weight loss cookbook. Um, and they're kind of like our favorite things that we eat in this household every single week on rotation. So the first one is like a butter tofu, like a butter chicken, but a butter tofu. Um, the second one is an oil-free, four ingredients, super easy naan to throw together. I did want to show you a chickpea flour naan, which is obviously gluten-free and everything, but that takes a little bit longer to make. That one's my favorite. This one is also really good though. Um, and then lastly, I thought it's really important just to show you how you can throw a really good tasty salad together that's just like super basic ingredients, but the flavor is on point. And I wish I could share it with you um, like through the screen. But anyway, I'll say anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack on. I'm going to show you how to make these things. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tofu ready for the butter tofu. And I'm sure you know the trick for making incredible, like meaty like tofu is just to freeze it. So once you've frozen it and then you've thawed it out, the texture completely changes and it really helps you like squeeze all the water out and it soaks up so much more of the flavor as well. So I have defrosted this overnight. I'm just going to give it a nice little squeeze. Um, and then I'm going to just angle you down a little bit, sorry with my countertop. You can either see my face or my food. So I think I'm gonna prioritize the food today. Um, so yeah, so you can either top it into little chunks, but I actually like to break it off with my hands because I feel like it has more of a, not that we're necessarily trying to replicate meat. And I know some people are put off by that. Um, but if you're wanting that like kind of meaty, chickeny, you know, texture and vibe, then breaking it off with your hands can be a, a really good option. So I'm just gonna go and crumble this. And my husband so kindly has put all of the ingredients and everything on a board here. So if I look up, to remind myself what I'm actually doing, then then that's why. <laughs> but yeah, just um, crumbling this in. And obviously you don't have to use tofu for this recipe. Um, if people are, you know, allergic to soy or something like that, you can obviously easy, easily substitute with this with any kind of legume. Chickpea would be good or, you know, any kind of, I know you can get um, soy-free kind of tofu. So, you know, that kind of stuff would be good too. But yeah, so I've just broken this out into loads of different little chunks. And then in here, I have also got some cornstarch, some cumin, garam masala, salt, and um, I'm just going to kind of add this to the top of my tofu. And that's really going to help it um, get nice and crispy when I whack it in the air fryer. Um, so I'm just going to give that a little mix. And then just excuse me while I just go and grab my air fryer. My kitchen is a bit all over the place. So I hope you don't mind me kind of zooming off to different places. Let me just get this in real quick. Absolutely not. Yeah, they do make tofu without soy because I'm allergic to soy. Tempu and pumfu. Oh, really? No, we can't get any of that in the UK. And I would love to try making some of that myself at some point. Yeah, they make it out of hemp seeds or pumpkin mm -hmm. seeds. I see it like at Whole Foods type stores. Have you guys ever tried that? I'd love to know. Isn't she great? I love her just the way she does it. Sorry, I'm back. Um, the other thing about my kitchen is it is a bit noisy. So when the air fryer is on, I know you can hear that. And I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> but um, we're going to persevere anyway. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of multitasking as I like to do in my household all the time anyway. Uh, so I've got this new found angle um, induction cooker just for um, this specifically. So let's see, hopefully it doesn't die on me. Right, there we go. So with all oil-free Indian cooking, I like to start off by toasting my spices. This really elevates the flavor and um, and it kind of you basically you want to toast your spices until they're really nice and fragrant. You can dry roast it obviously without any oil. So in here, let me just have a look and just remind myself what I've got. I've got a bay leaf. I've got eight cloves. I've got a cinnamon stick hiding in there as well. I've got black peppercorns, cumin seeds, and cardamom pods. So obviously, Indian food is just so darn flavorful. And when you're eating oil free and you really want to enjoy the flavors of what you're eating, especially with veggies involved, um, having a ton of spices can really be very helpful. So I'm just going to whack that in and this just needs to be toasted for like a couple of minutes and you'll really get the fragrance of all of those spices. And that's when you know you can move on to the next step. But this is a, a step that I highly recommend if you're wanting incredibly delicious Indian food. And obviously I'll show you how to do all of this oil free. All Indian food can of course be made oil free. It's usually laden with ghee and butter and so much oil. It's actually ridiculous. Like when I think about how much oil there is in most Indian food, like my husband and I used to go out to eat at Indian restaurants. It used to be a hobby of ours. And um, afterwards you just feel like so sluggish and just like, just like greasy from within. So I think, you know, finding ways to make um, your favorite Indian dishes oil free is something that gets me very excited anyway. So I'm still let that potter away for a little while. Um, and uh, please excuse me while I just drink a cup of tea. My mom bought me this new mug for Christmas because I love to have massive cups of tea. So yeah, that's a, that's a good one. What kind of tea do you drink? 
Um, oh, I, I quite enjoy a Roy Bush at the moment. So I'm having like a vanilla Roy Bush. Um, and um, then I also bought some like bedtime tea, which has got like, like vanilla and nutmeg and that kind of stuff. So I have a good variety. Yeah, I love that. Vanilla is my favorite. So now that this is, I can start to smell the aroma. So I'm just going to add in some water. I'm uh, also going to put in, oh, sorry, I'll move this over the side so it's not too steamy. So I've also, at the base of obviously all Indian food, is onion, garlic, and ginger, of course. So I'm just going to add that in. And obviously, doing it oil free, as most of your audience know, you just need a splash of water. People always get very confused by how to put oil free. And the best way to do it is just by not putting it in. It sounds too obvious, but that's really yeah. just how you do it. I'm just going to give that a little mix. And we're going to let this kind of, oh, sorry, I know you can't see super well. We're just going to let this kind of sit and um, cook down until the onions are kind of translucent and everything is nicely incorporated. Um, and then we'll kind of move on to the next little bit. Yeah, there you go. I wish that you could already get the onions already cooked. You know what I mean? Like that, the way we cook them. Just a big bag. Like, yeah, I mean, I would. I, I mean, I'm so lazy. I would buy that product. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 sautéed oil-free onions. Oh my gosh! If there was like a frozen packet with like loads of different little different bits, and then you just pop one out, that'd be amazing. I mean, I I don't know about you, but where I am, you can get little frozen garlics and frozen gingers. So if I'm making something, I just and like this completely oil-free from the freezer. So you just I just pop those in while I'm making some food, and I am that lazy as well. You know, there's a chef named Darshana Thacker. She used to work with Forks Over Knives. She's a friend of mine and she's Indian. And she said that she has done that where in her batch cooking, she has sauteed onion and garlic and frozen it. Uh, but but what I'm saying is I wish somebody else would do it and I'll just buy it. Yeah, I'm also that lazy as well. And I think when it comes to this, this lifestyle, you know, you can get all fancy about making your own beans and making your own plant milk and stuff. And that's great if you have the time to do that. But most people don't have the time. Most to do that. people don't have the time. Exactly. So you've got to make it easy for yourself. So buy tins of beans, buy whatever you need to buy. You know, frozen fruits and veggies are amazing. Frozen rice, frozen hash browns, whatever, whatever you can get to make your life easier. I say go for it. Fantastic. I'm just going to kind of clear up my area as I go along. If that's all right. Guys, okay. I'm going to Here's the link to her new Indian book that my friend Sharon loves. It's in the chat now. It was also in the show notes. So check it out. It's excellent. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. So now this has kind of been sauteed for a little bit. It's starting to, starting to look nice. So I'm going to add in my next thing. So I've kept this recipe very, very simple. And it just required a few basics. So I've just got two tins of tomatoes. I'm just going to pop these in real quick. And we're going to let that simmer away whilst I get started on the naan. So I've got two tins of tomatoes and then also just a bit of squeezy tomato puree to really give it a nice deep, rich tomato flavor. Do you like Indian food much, Chef AJ? Do you I eat do, it often? I, I really do. I especially love all the stuff when it, when they use cauliflower and potatoes. I think it's called, oh my gosh, what is it called? That thing? Aloo gobi? Yes, that's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so good. I mean, it's amazing how you can make a boring vegetable taste so incredible with just herbs and spices alone. And I think that's what the Indian cuisine really has got going for it. It just jam packs so much flavor into unsuspecting places. Like I, it, you know, I've done a whole like salad section where it's just, it seems so boring. Like it's just a few basic veggies, but it's all about the spices and the flavors that you put onto it. So a carrot salad, which is just carrots can suddenly come to life and you're like, Oh my God, carrots are amazing. So yeah, I get excited about it. We have Indian neighbors and they come to our, uh, they're, they're naturally vegetarian and they come to our potlucks and meetups and they're wonderful people and her food is amazing. It's really, really spicy, but I'm just trying to convince her she doesn't need oil. She says she doesn't use a lot, but like she feels like she can't cook without any, you know? Yeah. And a lot of people are like this. My mom was like that for such a long time. When I first started eating this way, she was really intrigued. But, you know, people, it's, it's more about that the, they've built up the habit of using oil. And just like having that splash of something, people really find like they need that. So if people need to like change up their oil dispenser and put water in there instead and just do a little splash of water, maybe that can be helpful. Yeah. But it is tricky for people, though, definitely. And maybe some of the things she buys, like some of the paste or some of the pre-made stuff has oil in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, in terms of Indian food, most things have oil in it, unfortunately. Um, but you know that you know, like I said, there's a way of making all Indian dishes totally oil-free. Um, it's just a matter of maybe getting a bit creative or just not putting the oil in there. 
So I am going to get started now on doing these four ingredients, super easy, like no need, no rise, none. Um, it's one of my absolute favorite recipes. Um, I'm going to quickly go and grab some yogurt because I forgot to get that out. So just bear with me one second. Take your time. Let's see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, I agree. You don't need oil. She may be using it to cook her spices. Yeah, she tells me that she uses it because it's in some little paste or something. We order if we order them. Oh, um, I'm going to ask her that, Justine. When she comes back, thank you for your question. And thank you for putting four question marks first. And we have an doc show today. We have a vegan doctor. Amy, there's a question from Justine. And it's about converting to US dollars. Jan says she loves your energy. Wait, where did that question go? About Oh, yeah, here it is. She says, if we order, if we order the book, will it automatically transfer to US dollars at checkout? She wants to know. Yes, it does. I get that question all the time because I know it's a bit confusing. I can only have it in one currency on my website. But yeah, it transfers automatically. So you really don't have to worry about it. If you're wanting to purchase it in dollars, my stand store in my Instagram bio link, that is automatically in dollars for people who want to do the dollar version. But yeah, through my website, it is in pounds. It does convert automatically. I know it's a bit confusing. Nice. And there's a question. Sharon McRae has her book. Yes, she she loves her. She's the one that told me about Amy and she bought it the second it came out. And uh, Rebecca says she loves your apple pie and she's making it right now. Yay. Oh, that is one of my favorites. Actually, I need to remake that at some point. I was going to remake that for Christmas and I got carried away. Um, oh, I'm so glad you really love it. I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. And Jill says she'd like to know if your Indian cookbook will be offered in print form at some point instead of an ebook. You could just print out the ebook. Well, it, I think people could definitely print out the ebook. It is a very colorful ebook. Like there's a lot of like visual stuff going on. So my sister-in-law Snigs, her sister Nimi is an incredible designer and she's just, she's gone to town on this book. So it just also, I'm so proud of it because it just looks so beautiful. So there's a lot of color involved. So I guess you could print, print it black and white, um, but I would love to get it. I mean, I'm not very good at being organized, um, but I would love to try and get it published at some point. It requires a bit more organization than I used to. So I'll see if my husband can help me out. But I know loads of people have been asking for the hard copy version. I'm going to be working on that in 2024 and I will do my best to get a hard copy version out there because um, yeah, I'd be proud of that too. Great. Tell us about your other books too. You've got quite a few yeah, so I've got, um, I'll just I'll just show you what I'm doing quickly with the naan so I can kind of speed up the naan process if that's okay. So I've got, um, so like I said, this one is just using plain flour. It's totally oil-free though, and it's super, super easy. Um, so I've just got a cup of flour in here, and then I'm just using, I do usually make my own um, homemade yogurt, the recipe for which is also in my Indian um, cookbook as well. But I'm just using this um, vegan soya Greek style yogurt at the moment because I wasn't prepared enough, unfortunately. So just half a cup of that. And we're just going to mix that in along with baking powder and garlic powder and some salt as well. Of course, you could omit the salt if you don't want it. This is actually for my husband and for my kids, and they like things a little salty. So uh, I'm just going to mix it all together and just give it a little bit of a knead whilst we are chatting, if that's all right. Um, but yes, I do have, um, I've got four meal plans as well, uh, which basically, I mean, I, in an ideal world, I would turn them into more of a book instead of meal plans. People started asking me for meal plans. It's not something that I ever thought I would really create. Although I think meal plans can be fantastic. Um, you know, people don't necessarily need all that variety all the time. So it's just more inspiration for the kind of recipe that I love and that I have eaten to lose 60 pounds. And uh, yeah, there's some of my favorite recipes in there. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people just kind of enjoy the enjoy the recipes. I mean, obviously, if you're somebody who likes meal plans and who feels like you like to have it all laid out with a shopping list and you know, all the prep stuff, it can really, you know, um, take that decision fatigue away. Um, but yeah, I've got four meal plans, one of which is like a potato reset kind of style one, because obviously potatoes are absolutely incredible for health, for weight loss, for all those things. And I just had a lot of fun, you know, getting creative with how to, how to make potatoes taste different in, you know, 21 different recipes. Um, yeah, you can, you can get all of those, obviously, um, through my website, if you're interested. Nice. Do you so get just, my favorite? What, what are the types of sweet potatoes that are available to you in England? So I didn't have a lot of sweet potatoes until I found my in my local Indian shop, which I've just discovered like six months ago. And I don't actually know what sweet potatoes they have, 
it's kind of re reminiscent of, I'm going to say like a Hannah Yam sweet potato, but I'm not 100% sure if that is the right kind. This is the one they eat in India all the time, and it's just incredible. It's like a white, uh, like on the outside and white yeah. on the inside. It's so good. That's my favorite. Yeah. And it's, and it's a lot more dense than other sweet potatoes as well. And it's not um, you mushy. Know, they, Do you ever find that as good as the orange ones are, they can get, get kind of mushy? Yeah, they're really watery. And like some, some of the, sometimes you can get a really good sweet one, but sometimes they completely lack flavor, especially in the UK. And they're just all water. And uh, my kids get very disappointed when, when we uh, crack open a sweet potato and it's like that. You said um, kids, but I only, when you do your videos, I only see one cute little girl. You have more than one. I do. Most of my videos I film um, when my little boy is at school because uh, he goes to school five days a week. But yeah, I've got two kids. My little boy, Abe, is five. And then Romy is two. And um, yeah. She's adorable. She, she eats healthy food. Oh, man. I mean, I can really see the difference between Abe, who's my little boy, and Romy. Um, I wasn't eating this way when um, when Abe was born. And he was, uh, you know, not that I like to think about it now. He was exposed to a lot more junk food than I would than I would have liked him to. Not loads, but just a little bit here and there. But with Romy, because I've been eating this way throughout my entire pregnancy and the whole time, you know, since her birth, she'll eat anything. Like, she gets so excited when I make Brussels sprouts. She's like, Brussels sprouts! And then she just wants a full bowl of them. I mean, it's so beautiful. I just love it. And that's one of the things that keeps me eating this way as well. Not only because it's great for me, but also because it's great for my kids. And if my kids can see me eating, a ton of vegetables and going like oh yum this is so delicious it makes them want to eat the veggies as well so um yeah that's that's another motivator for me definitely it's so it's so cute so i'm just i'm just um making sure that this dough kind of comes together nicely and then i'm going to let this rest for just a second while i finish off this um butter tofu right here so this has been cooking away for a little while and what I'm going to do, sorry, excuse my uh, excuse my messy hands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the bay leaf and the cinnamon. I'm just going to take that out because we're going to blend this up so it's nice, nice and smooth and creamy. Um, my my kids don't like chunky tomatoes in things. Uh, well, especially Abe, my little boy. So if I blend it up, I know he'll definitely eat it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pop this into my blender, give it a quick blend. Try not to spill it everywhere in the process. I don't know how people um, manage to make videos that just look so beautiful and so neat. I'm definitely not that person. I'm a messy, a messy soul. Things go everywhere, and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay. You are a girl so, after my own heart. That's exactly how I am. I, I am messy I hands, am, like tomato I am everywhere. <laughs> so messy. Meg says she loves you and your style. I am so messy too. I, I thank God my husband is a good cleaner upper because. Oh. I, Really I rely on my husband too. Oh, here's a question from Laura, who's watching live. Do you have any suggestions uh, as a substitute for yogurt? She's allergic to dairy and dislikes the taste. Well, we don't use any dairy here at all, Laura. There are so many yogurts you can get that are vegan and plant-based. There's coconut yogurt, soy yogurt, almond yogurt, cashew yogurt. Uh, those are the ones that come to mind. Yeah, there's, there's some incredible ones. I mean, I've done an oat yogurt. I don't know. Yeah, if you, if you said that. I mean, it can be difficult to buy a store-bought yogurt, at least in the UK, that doesn't have loads of, like, sugars and additives and stuff. So that's why I usually make my own yogurt, which is so much easier to make than you would ever expect. Um, so, yeah, so making your own yogurt can be a great option if you want to keep the ingredients really simple and really basic. Um, my favorite one is, like, a soy yogurt, and that, that, that's fantastic. Um, but I guess it depends which recipe she's talking about as a substitute. I'd have to know the specific recipe to kind of give some suggestions for like a yogurt substitute. So, yeah. Um, please excuse me while I just give this a little blend, Chef AJ. One sec. Absolutely. And I'm going to answer the question of. I'll see. Uh, Karen says. <laughs> Advice for people on warfarin about what to use instead of all the greens. Neither Amy or I are doctors, but at 11 o'clock, we have a plant-based doctor coming on who can answer that question. But the way it has been answered before is you don't change your diet to your medicine. You change your medicine to your diet and they can adjust your amount of medicine so that you're able to eat greens. Uh, one of the viewers says your book is so beautifully put together. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Laura says dry toasting spices and seeds make them much more flavor than roasting them in butter, ghee, or oil. I couldn't agree more. And um, 
I, I, I don't, Beth, Beth is asking, what are your favorite recipes? I don't know if she means from your book or in general, but you can answer it either way. Oh my goodness. I mean, there's just so many, anything with rice and potatoes and I'm there. Um, so any kind of sushi, any kind of quick um, stir fry or something, you know, broccoli, potato, hash brown bake from my rest, from my uh, like Indian cookbook specifically, the butter, um, butter tofu is fantastic. There's a lovely korma. Um, I, I'm a sweet person. So all of the puddings are my just absolute favorite. And it's amazing what you can do with, um, with, like I said, herbs and spices. And I don't know if you ever tried using black salt for things, um, but black salt can just take things to another level flavor wise. So there's like a fruit chat um, and also a potato chat in the cookbook, um, which is basically just either sweet potato or like a ton of fruit salad. But as soon as you sprinkle on, and it sounds unconventional, sounds a bit crazy. As soon as you sprinkle on like cumin and black salt onto the fruit, it takes it to another level. So one of my favorites is actually just a fruit salad with that stuff sprinkled on. And it's amazing how excited people get because it changes a fruit salad completely. Um, into something else. Oh, sorry, it's just it's just spitting on me, so I thought I would turn that down a second. Um, so. There's a wonderful comment from Ellen. If you're wondering how to really have broccoli mum impact your healthy cooking, just watch her YouTube videos and Instagram reels. She has had a huge impact on my life. Oh, that is so lovely. I, I, I get, like, it's hard to believe that like you're actually changing people's lives or impacting people's lives sometimes I feel like it's just me filming in my kitchen and nobody sees it but it's just so lovely to think that people are you know changing their habits and you know making themselves healthier and you know their families and impacting their families and that's just such a beautiful thing and so Julie says could you say what the name of the chickpea flower is in Indian the Indian name oh it's like Besan yeah, that yeah, is. So best, yeah, best, best and flour. Obviously, yeah, it kind of, I think it is a very slight difference between a best and flour and a chickpea flour, although I think they're interchangeable, really, so you can kind of use whichever one you fancy. So I did want to chat about this real quick. So for this butter tofu, um, I'm going to use a little splash of um, coconut milk, although obviously this is an optional one. This is what we've used in the cookbook. But you could do so many different things in order to give this a really lovely creaminess. One of my other favorites is using silken tofu. Um, so if you just blend up a pack of silken tofu, that adds incredible creaminess. Obviously, you can also use loads of beans, so like cannellini beans blended up, giving a really incredible silky um, kind of vibe as well. So you can feel free to substitute it. Or you could just go in with some, like, you know, um, like a cartons of um, coconut milk or soy milk or almond milk or something like that, depending on your preferences or if you're trying to uh, lose weight or if you're trying to maintain your weight, obviously you can like adjust that accordingly. But um, I just use like a third cup of coconut milk and that does give a really lovely creamy texture and it's just a little bit. And this is a quite a big recipe shared between multiple people. So for me, I think that's absolutely smart. fine, especially because I'm gonna pair it with a ton, a ton of veggies as well. Nice. So. Amber, Absolutely. is this the Amber that I know and love? She wants to know how much time does it take you to create your Instagram reels that you post daily? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it depends. I mean, there's so many different aspects to creating an Instagram reel, which I had no idea before I got started. And if you kind of are just more of a consumer of Instagram, it's really hard to kind of know. So firstly, it's just coming up with the concept of what you actually want to create. Now that, depending on how creative you are, that can take you know, five seconds or that can take hours and hours. And for me, it depends on the day. Sometimes I'm feeling really creative and sometimes I'm not. And I just want to eat a big bowl of potatoes. And I'm like, okay, I need to try and think about a really good recipe. Um, so that can take a while. But yeah, obviously the filming of it can be tricky in my house specifically because I've got two kids that are so wild and so noisy um, that it would, I have to put music on the videos sometimes just kind of like get them out of it because there's just a lot of screaming in my videos. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in terms of the editing side of things, it probably takes between one to two hours every single night to sit down and edit, which is quite a lot, actually, if I think about it. But when it, because it's something that I really love doing and I'm quite a creative person. So like the putting together the, the videos and like editing that is a really nice creative thing that I like to do. So I actually really have fun with the process, although I guess if you put it all together, it is quite lengthy. Wow. And then do, do those also go on YouTube, the same videos? Um, well, they do sometimes. It depends if I remember to put them on YouTube, actually. I um, I kind of sometimes put them on Instagram and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm done. And then the next few days, I'm like, I should really put that on YouTube as well. And then sometimes I've 
not saved it and I've forgotten it. So then it doesn't go on YouTube. So it depends what kind of mood I'm in actually. <laughs> so for this nan real quick, I have just separated this into four little pieces. Um, and I'm just gonna dust some flour on my surface. And my husband has kind of taught me how to do this. He used to be um, a pizza chef uh, for a place called Pizza Express here in the UK. So you meant to like press it out like this to get the to get the right shape and then roll it out with a rolling pin. So that's what he's told me to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. Right. Chrissy says, I have all of Amy's books. It's a great way to support her. I'm 63 and just wondering how we can get more families to eat this way. I'm down south in UK. Love you, Amy. Oh, that's so amazing. Oh, I'm so glad you love all the stuff. Um, but yeah, in terms of how to get more family, I'm assuming she means how to get her family to eat this way. Do you reckon, Chef AJ? Um, or, or hers and maybe everybody's. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the problem is eating this way um, isn't profitable. Um, so, you know, not a lot of people know about it because not a lot of people chat about it. So I guess just having the awareness for most people is the first, is the most important thing. And I think it's really sad that it's not just plastered everywhere that whole food plant-based diet is the best for, you know, for everything in terms of health and longevity and all those things. But I guess if you kind of have been lucky enough to have the knowledge, I guess passing it on to as many people as possible, friends and family, and I guess mainly, I mean, by being the example um, and showing people how you can be fit and healthy eating this way, because people will jump on board if they see what you're doing and if they're like, oh, wow, how have you lost 60 pounds? And you know, you've got so much energy and all that stuff. People are curious. Um, so I guess being the example for people um, is probably the most, the best way to kind of spread the message, I guess. Yep. Andy says, what is the name of her book? She has several, but we're talking about the Great North Indian Vegan Cookbook. And I just posted the link again, and it's always in show notes. But if you're watching on Twitter or Facebook, you don't see show notes. So hop on over to Instagram. So Susanna is saying one of the tricks she uses, and I think Mary McDougal invented it for people that don't want to use high fat coconut milk. You just put a few tiny drops of coconut extract. That's a, yeah, that's actually a great idea. If you want that kind of coconut flavor without all the fat, that's perfect. So yeah, I would do that where you like blend up some cannellini beans and then a few little drops of the coconut stuff. That'd be perfect. And um, there's a question from Karen. Do you worry about putting hot foods in the Vitamix? Um, well, firstly, I don't actually have a Vitamix personally. I wish I did. This is a very cheap, cheap knockoff version that kind of looks like a Vitamix, um, but it's still really good. Um, I put all sorts of hot things. I'm a bit of a risk taker. So sometimes soup explodes out the top and, and scolds me badly. But I just go for it and do it anyway, to be honest. So with this naan, I've just uh, rolled this out. Obviously, I know you couldn't really see what I was doing necessarily. I've got this really cool nonstick uh, like plug-in pancake maker. I think I bought it because I was trying to experiment with making my own injera a long time ago, which was an absolute fail. Injera is like an Ethiopian um, bread, which is one of my favorites um so yes anyway so but i've got this and it's really good for for just oil free cooking i really find it very helpful so i'm just going to pop this naan on here and we're just going to wait until the bottom gets nice and brown and then we're going to flip it over and that will be our naan portion all sorted it's very very quick and simple to throw together if i wasn't chatting it would take 15 minutes tops okay so i'm just gonna I'm just going to take us back to the butter tofu here real quick. And um, my tofu is actually ready. So I'm just going to grab that out of the air fryer. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Anna says, Amy is my favorite. I love her. I use so many of her recipes. And Beth says, could I print your book at Staples in color? I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, if you, if you can, then go for it. Um, my, I'm so lucky my sister-in-law is going to be printing some out in India and then bringing them back to us. But yeah, I need to try and figure out because most of my audience is based in the States and not in the UK where I am. I need to figure out how I would actually do printable versions in the States. Logistically, my mind gets confused with that aspect. Um, but yeah, by all means, print it out if you can, because I think, um, I think it's a great one. To, obviously when you're, you know, when you're in the kitchen, you want a physical book to flick through. I totally get that. Um, so I think that's a good option. Amy, you're going to have to come on more often because my audience loves you, Chris, or maybe they're your audience hopping over here. Christine says, I absolutely love Amy. She's a treasure. A bundle of energy is contagious, says Beth. 
But you always had this kind of energy, right? Even when you... No, 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 no. I, I used to have no energy at all, AJ. I used to be like, you know, like a blob on the couch from like 5 p.m. onwards. I would be on the couch with some Ben and Jerry's watching TV. And I'm like, oh, I can't get up. So no, 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 I did not, I did not used to have this energy at all. And that's another reason why I love this way of eating because I didn't know I had such an excitement for life. And just like, you know, when I'm in the kitchen, just making food, I'm hopping around, I'm skipping around, I'm jumping, listening to music, I'm having a great time. Whereas before I would kind of go through life like a, like a zombie, just trying to get through each task. And so yeah, this way of eating has changed my perspective, not just on food, but just on life in general, which I know sounds a bit dramatic, but it really has. That's great. Let's see some other nice comments. Uh... Um, so I want to just show you the naan is kind of like bubbling up here. You can see the bubbles going on. And that is the perfect time to just make sure we flip it over. It's nice and browned on this side. So yeah, it's going to be a really good naan. And I also, is... just to, I also just want to show how like how like chickeny looking this tofu oh is. Because it's it's like, those, look like, those look like chicken nuggets. I know it's like the texture from the frozen tofu. If no one has tried frozen freezing their tofu first, I can only highly recommend it because it's very delicious. And I'm trying to stop myself from eating it all right now before I even put it in the butter tofu. Usually, I snack on half of it as I'm going. Which yeah, that's so cool because freezing to you know freezing anything changes the texture. The raw food chefs like Chris Kendall and Lissa, they have this trick where they take fresh vegetables, freeze them, and defrost them, and it gives it just like a kind of oh. like a chewier kind of an interesting texture. I've tried that. It's it's kind of cool. So Linda says, Amy showed us how to make chocolate ice cream using chickpeas. That is phenomenal. She also makes her own tofu. And... I, I have tried making my own tofu and I love like red lentil tofu. I mean, I don't know if you've tried making your own tofu because you're soy free chef AJ, but you can do it from obviously any legume, any bean that you want. Um, and it's really just so much easier than I ever thought. Nice. Ellen says, is there a link for your electric round griddle that you're using for the naan? There is. It's not on my YouTube, I don't think. I think I've got it linked on my Amazon store in my Instagram. Uh, so feel free to go and check that out. But it's it's such a lifesaver in every way. If you want to, like, people always, because um, I do a lot of, like, wraps made of beans and mung beans and stuff like that, like simple two-ingredient ones, because I love wrapping food in a wrap. Um, and this is what I use to make the wrap. And people have a lot of trouble making those wraps. But yeah, I highly recommend if you're going to do oil-free cooking, getting yourself some kind of good nonstick pan um, is just vital. Yeah. Um, Linda would like you to talk about growing up in India. What, how old were oh. you? Yeah. So um, I'm just adding my tofu and a bit of lemon juice into this um, butter tofu. I'm just going to give it a quick mix. And then that is basically the butter tofu all finished. It's super creamy, super delicious. And it's like got good chickeny chunks going on in there. So I'm just going to pop that to the side and turn that off because that is done. Um, and, but yeah, in terms of growing up in India, um, I um, I actually grew up all around the world. I think we chatted about this last time, Chef AJ. I, um, as when I was four years old, we moved to Ethiopia where I lived until we were like 11. Um, and then from the age of 12 to 18, uh, with minus a little break in the middle, I lived in India. So it's really where I grew up and it's where I became very passionate about food and it's where I started cooking for myself. So Indian cuisine is is like one of the most important ones to me and it's the one that, you know, that I learned to, learned to create from a very young age. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love India. It's one of my favorite places. We went there last year for my brother's wedding um, and hopefully we're gonna be going there next year as well. But I would I would go there you know, every other week I could, if I could, especially with the British weather like this. Um, my brother's in India at the moment where it's like 30, you know, degrees Celsius and I'm so jealous. <laughs> but yeah, India's India's fantastic in so many ways and I do miss it a lot. Nice. Um, re uh, Caroline wants to know that uh, she loves your millet bun recipe. How did you come up with that? <laughs> oh, it's, um, well, it's, it is actually a fantastic recipe and I've actually been on the hunt to create healthy breads for such a long time. You cannot get any healthy breads in the UK. You can get some oil-free um, wraps, um, but they're made using regular flour. Now, of course, you know, you can have regular flour on your weight loss journey if you want to, but from a health perspective, I really wanted to mix it up. So my mom has been um, raw vegan for like a good, you know, six months now, and she uses a lot of psyllium husks in her raw breads. I think she's got Lisa's book about the wraps, um, which we absolutely love. Those are fantastic wraps. Um, and so I think some of them use psyllium husks to get that texture. So I thought, okay, 
clearly then the psyllium husk is the answer. And for a long time, I kind of went without the psyllium husks, trying to make different buns and breads and stuff. But as soon as you add the psyllium husks in, it changes the game completely. And it just gives it that fluffy texture. I don't know what it is, but they're just magic. Um, so yeah, so a lot of trial and experimentation with different grains and stuff, but the millet flour ones uh, was some of my favorite and the fluffiest. I also love the red lentil buns as well, especially yeah. because I'm working on building some muscle. So it's nice to have some extra legumey goodness in there for me. That's cool. Emily wants to know if there'll be a South Indian cookbook. What's the difference? I, I mean, I don't know much about Indian cuisine, so I do know that it can be, I, I had a neighbor and I wanted to introduce in my Indian friend, but turned out one was from South, one was from North. They knew it right away. So what, what is the difference between North and South? Oh man, I mean, as a country, it's such a massive country anyway. So like the UK is so tiny. So I mean, it's like multiple countries all in one go. I mean, it's, every state has its own completely unique way of cooking and stuff like that. But North and South Indian is just like completely different cuisines. Um, North Indian, I think is the typical one when we think of as, you know, if we're going out to an Indian restaurant, it's curries and rice and naan and all that kind of stuff. But when you go down South, there's a lot more rice and lentil used as opposed to wheat. That's kind of one of the differences. Also the spices are kind of different. There's a lot more coconut involved. Um, but like from down South, I don't know if you've ever had like a dosa or like idli. So it, those are kind of like, it's a the dosa is like a rice lentil pancake, a crispy rice lentil pancake. And an idli is rice and lentils. It's almost like a, like a steamed bun. Um, so that's kind of one of the typical things that you have down there. So yeah, they're really, really very different cuisines. And I think we are, my, my sister and all and I are definitely going to be doing a South Indian cookbook. And I'm so excited. There's going to be a lot more trial and error involved in that because there's a lot more, uh, there's a lot of oil used to like, make things non-stick in terms of making the pancakes and stuff like that. Um, and also just trying to figure out ways without people using the traditional um, so like implements to make that stuff. But yeah, we're really excited. We're going to get started on that at some point in 2024, but it's going to take a while to come up with those recipes, I think, but they're going to be great. Nice. Um, so I've got the butter tofu finished and I've also got my naan finished as well, which is just like a super fluffy, soft naan, obviously oil-free, super easy to throw together. But the, the the bit which I'm most excited to eat, which I'm sure you would be as well, is the massive gigantic salad. So we're gonna make that right now. Yum. I wish I had a bigger bowl, but I think I've used them all up. So we're gonna have to try and squeeze it into a teeny weeny bowl here. So just bear with me a second. Are there any products that you've seen or heard of that you would love to try, but you just aren't able to get in England? Um, I mean, I think there's a bunch of like oil free, like, well, I'll tell you what, a, like a corn tortilla. I know you were talking about those earlier. Yeah, you can't find those in the UK. And I I would love a corn tortilla. I tried making my own. It was a fail, but I, I'll, I'll keep persevering. But yeah, a corn tortilla would be fantastic. Um, and I mean, although I love buying products and I think they're fantastic. Well, I, the, um, I think the balsamic vinegars that you use, I'd love to try some of those, obviously. Um, but I think the point of this way of eating is to just focus on like the fruits and veggies, which you can get anywhere and it can be seasonal. Um, so I think that's kind of the priority in terms of my eating. I don't try and find a lot of like products to use. I try and focus on using fresh ingredients, you know, um, as, as the, my primary kind of source of fuel. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure if I went to the States, I'd get super excited about all kinds of stuff. Um, did you get so, the do you get the reduced balsamic vinegars? No, we don't. They're not sweet. They're um you can get you can get vinegars with like it says like a cherry vinegar or something, but I've bought a few of those. They're not sweet at all. It kind of just has a slight cherry vibe, but no, they're they're not like I know you use yours in like your desserts and stuff to yeah. like really give it like a great flavor. No, we don't get any of that stuff. Maybe I will get into making my own at some point. Do you have any friends or relatives with a U.S. address that are coming to visit? Because you get two free bottles for being on the show. It's just that he won't ship to England. That would be amazing. I need to see. My dad sometimes goes to the States. My stepmom is from the States. Um, so if they're around, I'll uh, I'll see if I can get them to bring some back. Because I would die to try some of that. I think I need to get myself over to the States. I think that's what I need to do at some point. So I'm working on that. Nice. Um, so I just want to um, share with you really quickly what I'm going to shove into this salad. It's super, super easy, of course, if you have everything prepped, like my lovely husband did for me today. Um, and you just you just smash it all in. And it's just so much volume and it's so much vibrant color. And it's just such an exciting thing to eat. So I've just got a couple of tomatoes all sliced up in here. One of the best parts of this salad is the sweetness from the mango. 
I often, I never would usually put sweet things in my salads, but now that I've started to do that, adding pineapple or apple or mango or something, it just changes the game it's completely. So adding in some mango in there. I also love some cucumber. So this is actually the mango chickpea salad from my cookbook. Um, it does usually have red onions in it. I'm not a massive red onion fan, although I know most people love them. So I have omitted the red onions for myself this evening. Um, going in with like a cup of chickpeas and then obviously some fresh coriander as well to give us loads of good flavor. Um, and then the dressing is just really super simple. We've got ground cumin, a clove of garlic, some coriander, ground fennel, lemon juice, salt and pepper. And um, it's obviously totally fat free, um, oil free, and it's still going to pack in a ton of flavor. And if people want their food to be exciting, I guess one of the keys is to find incredible sauces and dressings that they can use that are going to be really helpful for them on their weight loss journey. Because that's one of the things that makes food, you know, just taste delicious. Um, you know, you mentioned you wrote the book with your sister-in-law. Is she vegan? She is actually vegan. Yeah. So she's vegan. And she also like has adopted this way of eating since I have. In fact, I've influenced quite a lot of people in my family, which is just so lovely. Uh, you know, my aunt's gone vegan, my cousin's gone vegan, my sister-in-law has gone vegan. You know, since I've kind of made this transition and kind of shown them um, how incredible vegan food can actually be, even though I've always been a vegan, um, you know, but as a heavy overweight vegan, that doesn't really inspire. Um, but yeah, since switching to this way of eating, she's gone vegan and she's also primarily whole foodsy as well. Um, and her food's incredible. She's an incredible cook. She obviously grew up in India um, until she came um, to the UK a few years ago. So she has got like the true authentic Indian way of cooking, which is why I was so excited to collaborate with her because this is actually how people like, this is how her grandma made food for her to her entire family every single day. So like this is proper authentic cooking that we've shoved into this Indian cookbook along with a few like, you know, oil-free substitutions and some fun twists. So that's why I'm really excited about this cookbook because it's, it's like properly authentic. It looks amazing. So here's a, a nice comment from Karina. I love watching Amy and always follow you, Amy, and screenshot your recipes so I can copy what you do. I'm from Oxford, UK, and just think you're such an inspiration. People love you you because you you you're certain you're genuine, and I think and you haven't let your success go to your head either. Your weight oh. success or your Instagram success. You're you're real. Oh. Oh, well, I mean, I don't think that will ever change. I mean, I still get like, I was still super, super nervous to come on this show today. And I was just, Aww. I was stressing out. I was walking around like, oh my God, I'm going to see Chef AJ again. <laughs> it's so funny because like yesterday's doctor said this. I, I mean, I don't, I hope I'm not intimidating my guests, no. I try, you know, because I mean, you're I, amazing. I, I've never been mean to a guest yet. I've had two out of 1800 be kind of mean to me, but I, I really try to be warm and welcoming, even if I don't hundred percent agree with the person. Cause I don't want to be like a Howard Stern, you know, it's not my, that's not who I'm going for, but thank you. Here's a question about spices. Karen says, I don't know how to use any of those spices. I know how healthy they are, but I don't just, I just don't love them. How can I get myself to like them? Okay, well, I guess it depends. Firstly, are you using them right in the right recipes? Because if you're putting them in things that maybe don't go together, maybe that's why you don't like them. Posting them, I think, is really fantastic. If you put in raw spices, that's going to be very different in terms of the flavor you're going to get at the end of a curry. So definitely posting your spices like I showed you earlier on. Um, but also, if you're not somebody who loves, um, obviously, there's a difference between spices and spicy food. Uh, just because I use spices doesn't mean it's spicy. So if you're scared about that kind of aspect, then you can just use lovely spices like cloves and cardamom and you know cinnamon and all that kind of stuff. But I guess starting small, if you're wanting to love spices, start minimally. Just put like a few cumin seeds in and kind of build yourself up um, if that's what you're wanting to do. But yeah, just uh, I think there's loads of different techniques. But if obviously, if you're wanting... Some recipes to really get excited about spices then feel free checking out some amazing oil-free vegan indian recipes like there are in my cookbook which can kind of show you a few um ways to use them and then maybe you can kind of get creative on your own after that mm. yeah. um anyway i just wanted to show you quick quickly chef aj this salad is done and um i don't, I don't know about you but i get so excited about salad the mango makes it just so like incredibly yes. enticing just put it just putting a little bit of fruit in your salad, guys, can make it just from boring to amazing. The flavor. The flavor is so good. And the, and I wish you could taste the dressing as well. And it sounds like such a simple list of ingredients. But when you put it all together, it like fr from a boring salad, it, this is like something I'm so excited to eat. 
And I guess that's the magic of this way of eating is finding ways to make veggies and fruits, you know, taste exciting. But yeah, this is like a full meal. There's like a full cup of chickpeas in here, loads of mango, loads of veggies and stuff. And I'll typically have that with a little bit of like my butter tofu on the side and maybe like a piece of naan if I fancy. But this is going to be my priority, especially if I'm trying to like lose the last 10 pounds again. This is going to be my priority over anything else. And like I said, we'll try to really focus on the Indian cookbook, making a ton of incredibly exciting fruit and veggie recipes for you guys. Yeah, amazing. And and I love that you love your food, you know? I do. <laughs> it's just, do. It's, you know, because so many women think, well, you know, I shouldn't eat that much and I shouldn't eat it. So um, Jennifer says, so many Indian recipes call for coconut milk, but I detest the taste. What should I substitute? What about just any other plant milk that you like the taste of? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it depends on uh, what you're going for. If it's if it's for like a creamy consistency, plant milk is great. I mean, it, depending on where you are on nuts and seeds, you could always make like a like a cashew cream. It doesn't have to be a large amount or like any seeds. You could turn that into a cream and just add that in for a little bit of creaminess. But yeah, like I said, silken tofu or even just blending up some cannellini bin, beans will give you that same lovely creaminess as well. Great. Um, question, where do I get Lissa's wrap book? That would be on Raw Food Romance. But if you wait until March, you, you could get it <laughs> part of something special. I can't really tell you about it. Uh, Justina says, is there a trick to using the recipes to using the recipe search bar on your website? It doesn't seem to be working for me. I'm dying to cook your mushroom risotto that you were gushing over in an older video. That's a great question. And the reason is because I have no recipes on my website because I'm not organized enough to actually put them on my website. Um, at some point when I have some free time, like I, I find it tricky as a busy parent to find time to like do all of the things that I would love to do, like put all the recipes on my website. I would love to do that. But I think I might have one or two that I did at the very beginning when I was uploading it and I just haven't done any since. Um, but that's why I like to create the meal plans and the books and stuff for people who want to have the recipes there and then. But I do try and share a ton of free recipes over on my Instagram and on YouTube, I try and share and explain what I'm doing every single day when I do a what I eat in a day. Um, although I'm rubbish at writing the recipes up for the description, I apologize. Um, I, I need to get, with with time, when my kids are at school, I'll get better at that. Nice. Well, um, let's see, there was, oh, uh, Judy says, you talk really fast like I do. Well, that's why we like each other. And MT says, on your weight loss journey, did you use more predefined meals or just ate whenever you were hungry? Yeah, great question. I, in fact, I only ate when I was hungry. If I wasn't hungry, I'm not going to be eating. Depend, and like, it doesn't really matter what time of day it was. I mean, obviously, it's not great to eat super late at night. But if it was late and I was hungry, I, I would still eat some food. It doesn't really matter what time it is. And, you know, often I don't get hungry until about 11 or 12 in the morning. That's just a matter of preference. But if I got hungry at 6, I'm going to eat at 6. And I think following your hunger fullness cues is so important. Not only just making sure you eat when you're hungry, but also stopping when you're not hungry anymore. That's kind of really the, the magic golden dust. Once you know what to eat, then it's that aspect of it, which has been very helpful for my weight loss journey anyway. I agree with you 100%. Um, Christina says, what's the best psyllium product in the U.S. for baking Amy's grain legume buns? I think, I don't know if there's a best. I just, a lot of times it's generic. I just get the sprout span. Do you, do you have a particular brand you like, Amy? No, I think I've tried a few different ones. My mom just gave me her random batch and it all seems to work quite nicely. So I think any any variety would do the trick. Uh, Lori says, you already mentioned this, but your your mom is raw vegan. That's that's so interesting. Like uh, maybe she should come on the show. Oh, I, I, I would love to have her on the show. And I think she would love to as well. I think my little sister is a little bit embarrassed she's 16 and she gets you know she gets embarrassed about the, she, these things she's like i don't want you to go online but um but no I, I think she would be fantastic on the show she is super creative like obviously we've just had christmas dinner and we went to my mom's and she had a fully raw christmas dinner she it was incredible she made i don't know if you guys have the same stuff as we do in the uk but she made mince pies she made christmas pudding she made a massive loaf she made like she was like doing mashed potatoes all kinds of things totally raw and like it blows me away because um, she just really just got into the spirit, but it's whatever you want to create. I guess you can create it oil free vegan and you can create it raw. Um, but yeah, she's I mean, I'd love to do a cookbook with my mom one day as well, because I think that'd be crazy. Good. That's so cool. I would love to meet her in, in, in if, and see if she would like to come out. And Jan says the salad looks beautiful. Uh, what is it? Let's see if there's any other questions. Oh, my God. You're just so much fun to watch. Was making the injara not a success? Asks Claudine. 
Great question. I, I was really hoping for it to be, like I said, I grew up in Ethiopia and it's like one of my favorite breads ever. Whenever I go to London, I load up on it. But I think it was the wrong time of year and I, won I only did one trial and then I kind of quit. And it was many, many years ago before I was into this way of eating. Um, it was winter time and I didn't let it ferment properly. It's meant to be fermented. I think the heat is meant to be, uh, you know, meant to be quite hot outside as if it was in Ethiopia. But I am going to be writing at some point an Ethiopian vegan weight loss cookbook and uh, when I do that I'm going to not only share just a traditional injera but I want to share injera made with like a ton of also accessible grains it's usually made with pef I want to do a millet injera quinoa I want to do all those things multi-grain blends uh, it's just going to take me a little while to kind of do that great thank you uh, Catherine says uh, is your dad and stepmother also vegan so my dad is vegan, my stepmom isn't, and my um my sisters from that side, they're not vegan. Although they they do still love vegan food and they're you know they're fantastic and, and accepting of the way that we eat and the way that my dad eats and stuff, but they're not vegan. But yeah, my dad is vegan. Nice. And MT says, what is your favorite type of rice? Not brand, but type. Oh, I mean, I am a sucker for sushi. I could eat sushi every single day, I guess, or sushi rice in some form. So I think sushi rice, I do love brown sushi rice. Um, but I, I do like white sushi rice probably a little bit more. So just white sushi rice has to be my fave, I think. Mm, I love white rice and I cannot lie. I, you know, people yeah. think it's so perfect, really. I mean, just because I don't eat oil or animal products or sugar, and I do eat salt, not all the time. I, I'm, I mean, I, I will always pick white rice when, when I got a choice. It's, yeah. I go for it. It's yeah. good. It's good. It's so good. And you, and the thing is, people think they can't lose weight eating white rice. You totally oh can. It's God, like, and they have never heard of it. I had the guy, two of the doctors, I don't know if you heard this, you're much younger, but have you ever heard of Dr. Walter Kempner? No. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe briefly. I'm not. Yeah. Okay, so, not. so look him up. So he was a doctor that practiced at Duke University and found and created something called the rice diet. And he literally fed his diabetic patients who are his obese patients, white rice, sugar, and fruit juice. And they all became not just lean, but extremely lean and reverse their diabetes. So when people bash white rice, I'm like, you don't know. That's fantastic. That's good to know. So I'll, I'll just go to town on the white rice then. Right. Because <laughs> if you don't like it, I mean, it, look, I'm not saying that brown isn't healthier, but I don't eat for nutrients or, I mean, it's, I just, I've been vegan for years. I just think that people make it so hard, like trying to get all these little nutrients, they, ch they chase nutrients and it's just, it's ridiculous. I agree. I think eat what you love to eat and then you'll actually continue eating this way. If you're trying to eat stuff you don't like, you're probably going to go back and binge on junk food. So if you love white rice, eat white rice. Absolutely. And same thing for white potatoes. Uh, what is sushi rice, asks Jan. So it's just like a, a sticky short grain rice, which kind of obviously if you're making a sushi with like a basmati rice, it's just going to fall apart everywhere. So it sticks together really nicely so you can roll a sushi up. But yeah, it's a nice sticky kind of dense, lovely kind of gooey rice. It's lovely. And what I love to do is if I'm um, if I'm wanting to like make my rice go a little bit further and because I'm a volume eater, I need to squeeze in veggies to everything. I'll put cauliflower rice in with my sushi rice. So it's still nice and sticky, but it bulks out and gives it some extra low calorie density veggies. Um, so that's kind of like my trick if I'm wanting to eat like four sushis, I'll just put some cauliflower in there as well. You know, I speaking of cauliflower, I love taking uh, steamed cauliflower and using that. Like when you were saying, how do you get creaminess without coconut milk or even without yep. tofu or beans? Cauliflower, and it's so low calorie density and it's very versatile. It doesn't have a taste really, you know? It's, it's super creamy. I put cauliflower in all of my uh, banana and ice creams as well. Just it gives the bulk. You can't even taste it. So I had frozen cauliflower in banana and ice creams. I put it in my, I call it chocolate cakes, but it's like a baked oatmeal. I put cauliflower in everything. My freezer is jam packed full of frozen cauliflower. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, does Broccoli Mom asks Michelle have videos of, of her making the tofu alternatives from other beans and legumes? Any tips? I think I might have shared it on a YouTube video a long time ago. I need to get better at doing specific recipe videos on YouTube, but I do have it on Instagram. You just have to scroll back. Great. Thank you. And Barb says, I love watching your videos. So inspiring. What advice would you give to someone who has lots of illnesses and diabetes and wants to make changes, but it all feels impossible or overwhelming? I tell them to take the McDougal online program next month. That, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, I guess it depends on the person. Some people just need to jump in all in and some people that's just too much. And then it's just, you know, they can't handle it. So, I mean, if that's not you, then feel free to take it slow and just start incorporating more veggies and more starches into your diet where it's at. 
You know, I guess, you know, as we talked about before, having a clean environment is so helpful. So if you think you're going to be able to do this way of eating when you, you know, you got candy and cookies and stuff all around you, that's going to be really tricky. So try and think about getting a clean environment. But yeah, just take it easy add in those veggies and really, really trust the process as well. Because for, for ages, I was doing this and I was like, I can't actually eat as many potatoes as I want. Like, that's ridiculous, but you can. So just trust the process and enjoy the carbs with the veggie combination because it's fantastic. Obviously, your taste buds have to adjust. But, you know, after a few weeks or a month or so, you're going to love it more than you've loved junk food before. Absolutely. Tammy says uh, people tell her they can't eat carbs. And I tell them that's practically all I eat. And they look stunned. Yeah, I get that a lot, too. Yeah, I love I love shocking people with that, actually. And just and just also the portions that I eat, like when I go out, obviously, I always bring my food because no one else caters for oil free vegan. So when I go out with massive portions of food, I get like crazy. Like, you're not going to eat all that. Where does it go? How are you going to put all that away? And uh, yeah, I love I love shocking people like that. Nice. So um, you had mentioned on the video where you thought you might have gained 10 pounds, that some of it might have been muscle. Yeah. So I'm actually working on my fitness journey. I feel like it's an interesting thing when you lose weight and you kind of get down to your, I guess, ideal weight. I didn't really have a weight that I was trying to get to anyway. And then it's like, OK, so what where am I going to go from here? You can obviously continue going, but I really want to focus on my health and in terms of longevity I think it's really important to move your body obviously and to build muscle especially as you get older as well so and I also found that I'm I really love going to the gym and lifting heavy weights it makes me feel strong and powerful and and it's a really fun thing for me to do and it's a nice bit of me time every day as well without my kids screaming at me um so yes yeah, so I'm really working on my fitness journey so in, you know in terms of gaining 10 pounds yes some of that might be muscle I don't think I've gained that much muscle that it's 10 pounds worth and I can definitely feel a difference that I've got some more fat on my body and like I said you don't have to be you can be as lean as you want to be but for me I like to be a little bit leaner than where I am now and I also want to get my habits back in order so for me that's just a personal preference um but yeah it's really fun to I would think start incorporating fitness uh, when you feel like your body's ready to do that once you've locked you know if I, somebody told me to go to the gym when I was 60 pounds heavier, I would have laughed at them. Not a chance. I wouldn't have done that. Some nice gentle walking was perfect. But now that I'm kind of a much lighter, it's so much more pleasant to go to the gym and to work on my movement. And I think people just need to do that whenever they're ready. But I think that's also an essential part of people's health journey when they get to that point as well. Um, because obviously food and moving their body goes hand in hand. Do you weigh yourself? And if so, how often and do you recommend people weigh themselves? I think it depends what your goals are. I think if your goals are to um to like obviously if you're in maximum weight loss mode i think it can be if you look at your weight loss uh, look at the scale as more factual information as opposed to letting it hurt you emotionally like i used to i used you know every time i hopped on the scale i was like oh no i'm a terrible person it has nothing to do with how you are as a person look at it as factual information so if you if you think it would be helpful you know every week or a few times a week hop on the scale just to see how your progress is going have you hit a plateau all those kinds of things i don't really weigh myself very often like the last year I haven't I've maybe gone on like 10 times and that's kind of fine but now that I'm kind of focusing on maybe losing the last 10 pounds I also bought myself some scales which can kind of tell you the muscle to fat ratio as well just because I was curious as to how much muscle I was building so I probably hop on there a few times a week just to give me a bit of variation because every day is different you know if you're coming up to your period or if you've eaten more salt or, you know, that can all fluctuate um, the weight on the scale. So if you want to track your weight, I recommend a few times a week just to get a nice average. That's me personally. Thank you. Anne wants to know what was the liquid in your salad dressing? Oh, that was lemon juice. Sorry, lemon juice. So there was a, um, in the salad dressing, there was ground cumin, ground coriander, ground fennel, a clove of garlic, salt and pepper, and lemon juice as well. That was the liquid. Um, and if you want to take it up a notch, um, what I love to do is add in place of the salt, I like black salt, just because Indian food just has a ton of black salt in it. If you don't like that, that's fair enough. You don't have to use it, but I just love black salt instead. Nice. Thank you. People are saying that they would love an Ethiopian cookbook and they can't wait for it. Oh, yay. That's so exciting. I mean, I know it's a bit of an obscure cuisine, but I think it's becoming more and more popular. Um, and it's not very oil free friendly. Any Ethiopian restaurant you go to, it's it's delicious. And there's loads of great vegan options, but it's very, very oily and very, very heavy. So I think having oil free versions of that would be super exciting for loads of people. 
nice. Yeah, the oil thing is just people just don't get it. Restaurants don't get it. And, and it doesn't make sense. If they would save money, cleanup would be easier. I've, I've worked with a few restaurants, at least when I lived in Los Angeles, that got it and did it. But it's just the chefs are just because they went to culinary school and this is how they were taught. They they don't they just don't want to let go of that oil, you know, which is the biggest difference of whether or not people are going to lose weight easily and permanently, I think. Exactly. And I was in denial about this for years as well. Um, so it's easily done. But I, hopefully over the course of time, people will become more oil free friendly and you might actually see oil free dishes on a menu like that would be my dream in the UK. But I think that's maybe 50 years in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. Melissa says she loves the cashew cream idea instead of coconut cream. That's what was stopping her from making Indian food. And <laughs> Uh, let's see. I saw something. Oh, um, MT says, do you think the potato reset you did is highly effective? Oh my goodness. Yes. I mean, I've redone it multiple times and every single time I lose weight. And not only that is, I feel like there's so many different reasons why a potato reset is fantastic. Not only because potatoes are super low calorie density, they're obviously a wet starch, um, which is brilliant. But also when you have more monotony in what you're eating, you eat less food because it's less exciting. So every time I've done a potato reset, no matter what size or what weight I've been, I've always lost some weight. Um, so I think it's highly effective for me anyway. And for the people that I have chatted to online, um, it's, it can be a really helpful, um, like just place to start from as well. If you're wanting to reset your taste buds, I think it's really helpful to really kind of quit the junk food and also just to trust that carbs and potatoes are actually incredible for weight loss. You can do one to two weeks of a potato um, reset and then you'll you'll just see the difference. Um, and I think that is a very powerful thing and it makes people trust the process as well. It's all I kind of eat is potatoes and vegetables. So how am I going to, what am I going to reset on? <laughs> exactly. Know? Just look at Chef AJ. Oh my God. <laughs> Linda says, is there a checkout code needed when getting the cookbook? No, I, you just click the link. Yeah, you just click the link. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely is right. Um, let's see. Oh, I, do you have a Ninja Creamy? I have just ordered one as a special Christmas present to myself and it's en route right now. I also ordered myself a mi milky plant, which is like a milk maker, and that arrived yesterday. So I'm having a lot of fun making my own milks because I was sick of buying milks from the shop. Sometimes they have oil free ones, sometimes they don't. And I was getting frustrated and it, it's expensive in the UK and it's a waste of packaging. So I'm so excited to get a milk maker and a Ninja Creamy. And I think sometimes you, I was, you know, I kind of put off getting those things for like the last year when I kind of knew I wanted to buy them. And sometimes we do that to ourselves when it can actually be such a helpful part of our process for weight loss and for health and stuff. And sometimes we need to stop, you know, dilly dallying and just, just do it. Be, you know, be go-getters. <laughs> nice. Well, Melissa's wanting a Ninja Creamy cookbook from you. Oh, that's yes, that's already on on my mind. The problem is I'm only one person. I have too many ideas and I have no time to actually do the things. But yes, I, I, I intend to do a ninja ninja creamy book at some point with a ton of beans and cauliflower involved as well, of course. That sounds oh cauliflower, that sounds amazing. Uh, Claudine says, what brand of milk maker did you order? So I just ordered the Milky Plant. I think it's one of the highly rated ones in the UK. Obviously, I think there's some great ones in the States. I think you do you have one of those, Chef AJ? I, don't I, remember. I, you know, I have the Nutra Milk and I use it at the beginning, but I don't use enough milk that it. I still buy mine. I'm going to be honest. And I buy a yeah. brand that has salt in it, but I love it. It's from we have Sam's Club here. Do you have anything like Costco or Sam's Club in the UK? Oh, we do have we do have some different variations of that. Yeah. But um, none, none near where I am, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think whatever works, whatever works for you. I mean, I am just going to have some fun experimenting. I also wanted to share some fun recipes with like different milks and see if I could do like a chickpea milk and a banana milk and fun stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I've made banana milk. That's that's great. I've even made zucchini milk, believe it or not. Oh, Really? Do you put anything else in with like, is it like, no, a I, I have a video. it's just, I mean, it, because I ran out of milk and I needed it and it like, it was amazing and it's so easy to make. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, right. I'm going to have to get, I'm gonna have you, check that out. Oh, you can't get the nutra milk in the UK. They've been wanting to come on the show, but they're not answering me. Let's see. I just want to make sure I miss any questions that you guys have. Yeah. People can't wait for your Ninja Creamy recipes. The cauliflower ones will rock my world. If you have any, that would be, oh, here's a question. Debbie says, I bought your Indian cookbook and can't wait to make some of the recipes. I've tried making the red lentil wraps and they stay wet in the middle. Maybe she's not cooking long enough. I mean, I think it depends on maybe what she's cooking them on. If she's ha if she has a really good nonstick pan, then I mean, 
I have never had any issues with it and my family have also tried the recipe. So it might be the nonstick pan that you're using or it might be it might be the consistency or maybe maybe different red lentils are different. I'm not sure. I've never had any issue with it personally. So I'm not quite sure what could be going on there. That's it. Trish says she just got an almond cow and they have a corn milk recipe. You know, with, what I understanding is that the plant milk makers, some of them are different because I don't know the one you ordered. My understanding, like the almond cow, it, it strains the solids from the liquids and it's more of a like um like a nut water, whereas with the nutri milk, it's like the whole food. Like, you know, it's kind of like the difference if you make it in a Vitamix and strain yeah. it, strain it. So I guess yeah. it depends what people are looking for. It's going to be lower calorie density when you strain out the stuff. Yeah, I think mine strains out the stuff and you have to kind of empty that every now and again. Uh, but like I, I've only just got it and I'm just kind of having some fun experimenting with it. But I think I will do a full YouTube video of like my favorite, you know, at home plant milks once I've kind of had a chance to get creative. That'll be fun. Um, Karen, she cooks her naan on the thing that she showed. I don't know what it's called, but she that the, the griddle or whatever. You yeah. Got. Yeah. So what are your plans for New Year's Eve and for the new year? Um, well, we don't really do much for New Year's Eve. I've never really celebrated it very much. And when you've got two kids who are absolutely wild and who need to go to sleep at seven o'clock, otherwise they start to go loopy, we're going to be putting them to bed. And I think I'm just going to snuggle up with my husband and just watch a fun movie. And I'll probably be asleep by 10 o'clock because I'm going to go to the gym first thing in the morning. So it sounds very boring, but actually that's an ideal night for me. And I really love that actually. And uh, I might just take a little night off from editing um, tomorrow night anyway. Um, but yeah, and in terms of the new year, I'm just... I'm excited to um, have a bit of time. I've been really focused for the last year on this Indian cookbook and trying to make it perfect and obviously poured a lot of uh, love and effort into it. And I'm excited to figure out what my next big project is going to be. So I haven't quite figured that out yet and I don't want to rush myself, um, but I'm really excited to kind of figure out what that is, whether it's coaching with people individually, because I did do that for a while and I really love like actually chatting to people and helping them with their specific issues um, or whether it's writing another recipe book or something. But yeah, there'll be some fun stuff in 2024. And it's always nice to like start fresh with the new year. It's just such a good feeling. Yeah, why don't you take the food revolution course? I'm thinking of taking it. Do you know what that is? It's a six No, month. I don't. Oh, you, you, have you heard of John Robbins, Ocean Robbins, the Food Revolution Network? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't spend a lot of time consuming information. I more produce the information, but I need to know about this. Okay. Well, he, John Robbins used to be, he was the heir to, we, in the United States, there's a famous ice cream store called Baskin Robbins or 31 Flavors. And his yeah. father owned it along with his uncle, but he walked away from the fortune because he just, he's vegan. He wrote a really famous book called Diet for a New America. And him and his son, Ocean Robbins, founded what's called the Food Revolution Network. And they, they produce wonderful summits and content. And there's like the six month course that just helps you with coaching and your business. I'll send you the link. It might be, I'm thinking of taking it. It might be fun. Yes. Oh my goodness. That sounds amazing. Oh, please do send me that because, you know, when you don't have, when you don't have any of that knowledge or you know, it's quite overwhelming to think about doing that without any knowledge. It's like, you have to start from scratch. So I guess a course would be super, super helpful. Yes. Please send that over. That'd be amazing. Absolutely. Yes. To Amy having a regular spot. If she wants it, I will get her on, you know? So I Absolutely. mean, it's, it's just, I know you, they, they love you, Amy. Thank you. This was such a fun time to spend with you and sorry about the little glitch at the beginning. I should have practiced it better, but you're very patient and kind right. <laughs> you every success in the new year. And you're just so much fun to watch and your recipes are amazing. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks for everyone for watching. Thanks so much Chef AJ, yeah. for having me on. I've loved it. Right, last question. Do you like brown hair or blonde hair better? Oh, great. I'm, I'm still getting used to the brown hair, but I think brown hair makes me, yeah, I think the brown hair, I'm going to stick with this for a while. I feel a bit more natural with the brown hair. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think they both look great. I, it's not, I'm finally used to the brown hair, so don't keep changing it because I've got, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, I, I, I want to change my mind every six months, so I could be, I could be purple, you know. Yeah, I'm just summer, kidding. I'm, I'm kidding, but it looks, it looks, <laughs> thanks so much, Amy. Take care. Thanks, Chef AJ. Happy New Year. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in about 30 minutes. My guest will be Dr. Andy or Andrew Klonicky, and he is going to be talking about hold on, nutrition and health, the role of diet in preventing and reversing disease. And he actually had a bypass operation, heart bypass, and that's when he decided to become vegan. So he's going to be giving a great presentation. Take care.